when we see kids at an early age, we have to make a decision as where they are at from a functional and a growth and development standpoint. This is how the child started in the very beginning, extremely narrow across the upper jaw, high arch palate, constricted arch, very crowded front teeth, same thing on the bottom. Very, very narrow, a lot of crowding, and when you put the teeth together, you can see the bite is very, very deep this way and very, very narrow this way. The goal is to expand the upper jaw and to open the lower jaw. So this is the before. What we then do is to expand the upper jaw, we use a little device that looks like this. It's called a quad helix. Quad means four, one, two, three, four. Every one of those little, little circles is called a helix. What we do is we expand it, compress it, glue it in. It doesn't hurt the child. It doesn't look funny. They don't talk funny. There's no key. doesn't have to get the parents involved. It slowly and gently widens or expands the upper jaw. If you want to see the before, that's the before. Here's what the expansion looks like here, before and after. You can see how the child has expanded tremendously and also lined up the upper front teeth. So that's the expansion appliance on the upper jaw. For the lower jaw, remember the lower jaw was really, really narrow like this. And then after we expanded, they look like this. We even created a little bit of extra room. We don't have a tooth missing. And to do that, we use something called a bihelix on the lower jaw. Bi means two, just like in a bicycle. And there we have, right here, bihelix one, two little helixes. Same thing, we expand it here, compress it, glue it in. And the lower wire just fits just like that. It's underneath the tongue. It doesn't hurt the child or anything. So for the first about five to six months, the children were something like this. You won't even see it from the outside. From the outside, they look absolutely wonderful. And what that does is as they're growing, these are only in growing children, we have the ability to expand or widen the upper and lower jaw. And here's the lower jaw before and after. And here's the upper jaw before and after. Not all children are subject or need two-phase orthodontics. I'd probably tell you 40 to 50 percent do, so it's worthwhile to take them to an orthodontist who knows what's going on and at least is amenable to considering two-phase orthodontics.